Hello everyone, this is Marcin and in this video I'm going to show you a few different methods on how to achieve the matte effect on your images in Photoshop like this one right here. So this is before and after a few steps this is the effect. In this video I'm going to show you a few different methods so you can decide on your own which method is the best for you and which method gives you desired look. First method I'm going to show you is the gray layer method. So to do this, I'm going to solid color and in solid color, I'm going to choose the gray color. To be universal, I'm going to set the brightness at 50%. So the effect will be rather uh, simple, right between white and black color. And then I'm going to change blending mode to luminosity. So what happened now, a luminosity affects only the light and not the colors and as gray has brightness at 50%, all of this got completely flattened out. Of course, this effect would be too strong. So to adjust this, we can lower the opacity and that would be the effect. We can help ourselves with some other layer that will help us to adjust the contrast that could be levels, curves, or even something as simple as brightness contrast and I could increase the contrast over here and that would be my matte effect. Of course, we can manipulate with this uh, effect and not necessarily use uh, just 50% gray. If we want something darker, we will use a darker shade of gray. If we want uh, to make the image maybe more moody, let's have a look at the effect. As you can see, um, the effect will be probably uh, stronger on the highlights as we lower the highlights more and do not lower the shadows uh, as much. So decide which gray color suits better. Very similar to this method would be a gradient map. Gradient map allow us to set precisely the stop points for the highlights and the shadows. So for the shadows, I could use the gray color that would be a little bit darker here. So it won't wash out the shadows too much, which would be probably slightly better, uh, to be honest. And for the highlights, I would choose something brighter. So I'm not going to lower uh, the highlights as much. And then I would change blending mode to luminosity, as you can see, very similar effect, but uh, much more settled. And after that, I could help myself with some other layer and and just the contrasts. The next method would be the method for which I use levels or curves. So both of these adjustment layers allow us to actually cut out the darkest point of the image. In the RGB mode, we can simply go to the bottom slider and increase the brightness of the dark pixels and set up the level of the darkest point somewhere here in this gray area. So the darkest point of the image right now is this shade of gray and everything that was darker got increased in the brightness. So increase the colors in the dark pixels and the same thing we can do by on the highlights by decreasing the brightest point of the image. And after that, of course, we can adjust the contrast. Maybe we could stay with the levels and manipulate with these sliders, adjusting the dark pixels and the bright pixels on the image. If we change the colors, we can always uh, check different blending modes and change normal to luminosity to make sure that the colors as are as we like them. Uh, very similar to this would be curve adjustment layer. Curve adjustment layer actually allow us to do exactly the same thing by working on the curve. So what we could do here, we can increase the same, the darkest point of the image. We can add more light to it and decrease on the highlights. And then we can also work on the contrast to make sure that this image is not too flat. So we can do it very precisely uh, with this method, of course. If you want to know more about levels and curves, make sure you check some other videos on my channel where I give complete guide 
to curve adjustment layer as well other video where I give complete guide on the levels adjustment layer. So this was the second method. Uh, let's remove this. And of course, remember about the blending modes here. So you can always change the blending modes if the color is not right. And the last method I want to show you, it's actually the favorite method uh, for me. It's the favorite method for giving the matte effect and it's under the exposure adjustment layer. So I'm going to open exposure adjustment layer and we have three different sliders here. So exposure will have the strongest effect on the highlights, right? So we will be increasing the exposure from the source of light. Then we have offset and offset works on the pretty much opposite way to exposure. It uh, will be working mainly in the source of the dark pixels. So when I work with the offset, it's increasing the shadows and the gamma is somewhere in between these two. Uh, so it will be affecting more uh, around the mid-tone area. So if I want to wash out the shadows, I can simply increase the offset and it will give me really nice wash out effect. Uh, also, I want to polish this a little bit more. So I want to give the special mood. So I will darken uh, some of these uh, mid-tones here. It will flatten out the image, but it will give me really special mood on this image. I will change blending mode to make sure that the colors are right. And I think these ones are maybe a little bit too saturated. So I go back to normal. And to work on the contrast, I can go to brightness contrast and increase the contrast over here. If I think it's too dark, I can increase the brightness. So these are three uh, major techniques that I would use for matte effect. So using the gray color, gray layer, it could be gradient. We can use levels or curves. Uh, because these are easily available and common adjustment layers to use. And the other method giving maybe a little bit different results is using exposure adjustment layer that allow you to manipulate precisely around the dark tones. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to know more about me, make sure to check the links in the description. You can find my portfolio, my retouching portfolio, because retouching is the job I do on the daily basis. And if you want to learn more about Photoshop and retouching, make sure to check my educational page where you can find my premium courses. For now, uh, thank you for watching and see you next time in the next tutorial.